Welcome to a tutorial event on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to do an introduction to SugarCube as part of a series on SugarCube 2.36. So let me go ahead and open up a story I've prepared for this video. And we have a story here loaded with SugarCube 2.36. Now, if you're coming from experiences with another story format, perhaps a default story format hollow, things might look a little different. So let's go ahead and talk about the differences and the strengths of SugarCube in particular. So when we go to edit a passage and I double click, you will notice something a little bit different if you've used other story formats that have a particular toolbar. So if you've used versions of Chatbook, which is another story format, or Hilo, which is a third story format, you may have seen an additional little toolbar right here. At least as of this current version of SugarCube, it does not provide that toolbar. However, many of its strengths are kind of hidden in within the build themselves. So we don't have this current toolbar, but all other options provided by Twine are freely available. So let's go ahead and start the story with no content in it, because I want to point out something else and one of the major strengths of SugarCube. So when I go ahead and click play, and we'll notice if you're coming from another story format, it looks a little different. And this is where the strengths of SugarCube really come into play. So SugarCube provides functionality find, found in many other story formats, such as going forward and going back, if I had links to go to, and in this case I don't. But it also provides a couple of other things. One in the most obvious way is it has a full sidebar right here. Now, if you're coming from Harlow, you may be used to the go forward, go back options, but SugarCube takes that a step forward, and we have go forward and go back if those are available. We also can create various saves, and this saves any values we've changed as we've moved the story, including with variables, which aren't covered in this video, but are a possibility we could do, as well as the ability to save to disk and load from disk, which is incredibly useful for some projects. We can also completely restart everything, and it asks us to confirm. And if we wanted to give the reader, or if we we're making more like a game experience, a player, the ability to completely restart the story, we can do that. So I mentioned that the strengths of SugarCube are a little different. So as we'll see in future videos and in written material corresponding to those videos, that a lot of the strengths in SugarCube is what it provides to authors that they can then decide and compose together for readers. So a lot of the strengths are not quite on the surface level. So if you were coming from Hello into SugarCube, you may have noticed you got used to using toolbars, and a lot of the functionality, again, is kind of on a surface level with Harlow. It does have a number of advanced things, but for SugarCube in particular, the advanced options are far extended than they would be in Harlow. You can do many of the same things across Harlow and SugarCube, but SugarCube allows it a couple of steps more. So if you're arriving here for this first video, within this series coming to SugarCube, welcome. As I mentioned, SugarCube's a little bit different from Harlow, or if you previously used Chatbook, we don't have a toolbar, at least in this current version. And again, when we make a build, we have this sidebar with its additional options of going forward, going back, and as I mentioned, saves and restart. As we will go into in future videos, again, greater functionality is within what we can or what is provided to authors as we shape stories for readers and we'll discuss working with a particular concept macros as they are used to generate more programming effects and programming actions allow us to more easily shape our stories moving forward in future videos thanks for watching